My name is Mark Rivett and I'm the editor of the Journal of Family Therapy. At the 2011 Association for Family Therapy conference, the journal has hosted a series of podcasts. And this is one of those podcasts. I introduce the two of you, John Burnham from Park, Birmingham Parkview Clinic um, and uh, Barry Mason from the Institute of Family Therapy London. Both of you well known in the field, published many books and many articles. Um, so I, you've been here at the conference uh, for two days now. I guess I'm interested in asking the two of you to tell us something about the main ideas that you've wanted to get over to the audience in these two days. We enjoy presenting together and sometimes it's on the same kind of theme to begin with and sometimes it's on separate themes which we make connections with. And this presentation was the latter. There were two kind of separate things but gradually ourselves and the audience made connections between them. So I kicked off in the, in the uh, presentation and I it was called the actually not knowing position. Right. Okay. So it was training ourselves to be able to talk with people without knowing what the content was that they were um, that of their experience. Right. Because sometimes people will, for various reasons, not want to tell us what's happened. So that shouldn't disable us from enabling them to discuss the experience and the effects in their life. We started off with looking about what had pleased somebody. So we asked the whole audience. Think of a memory that, um, think of something that's happened in your past couple of weeks or something you've been pleased with. And then we asked them to interview each other um, about that moment, but n without knowing what it was. Okay. So yeah. the idea wasn't to find out, yeah. the idea was to help, and we made a few kind of aspects of that, mm -hmm. the, the event itself, the personal effect, mm -hmm. the interpersonal effects, and the kind of broader um, community effects that that might have. And so we'll take an ordinary event and to help them to explore. So you, as the interviewer, were responsible for helping the person to span that. And so, and then it changed around. So the, the points that I wanted to make was that sometimes if somebody tells you what it is, that your own value may not lead you to recognise how important that was. Right, yes. Yeah? yes. So that you don't pay attention yes. to it. Yeah. Secondly, that... Um, that you might think that you don't know for about, enough about that no, topic okay. in order to, to, to be interested right. or to okay. Okay. So this helps yeah. you develop that ability mm -hmm. without actually knowing. So okay. they, they, that's, that's the main points. And that we can rehearse and practice that ability so we can be ready. Right. Whether, for whatever reason the client doesn't want to tell you, you can still engage in conversation with them about it. Thank you very much for summarising that, John. Barry, what was, what, where were you coming from? What were you trying yeah. to... I mean, I suppose the thing is that, like John says, we've come slightly from different positions, but actually one of the things that joined us relates to um, a sort of definition of change, or rather, rather grandly called uh, an equation for change. Okay. And, um, <laughs> an uh, American moment. <laughs> and, um, but what it, what it is, that <coughs> change yes. um, it equals a commitment to experimenting with difference. Okay. Uh, right. Then you have to put that into action, yes. and then there has to be repetition plus repetition mm -hmm. plus time. Yes. So, in a sense, what we were both doing was we were, both uh, aspects of our presentation were about commitment to experiment with right. difference okay. and asking yeah. the audience mm -hmm. and asking clients mm -hmm. that that's part of you know, work, experiment with difference and see what happens. My part was. Um, Related to a session where it was a sort of, we we're talking about sort of making the most of ordinary moments. Yes, that's right. And that's uh, the, 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 there was an ordinary moment in a session where I'm just talking with this couple and um, the, uh, uh, we were just going into, I was talking at this point with the, the man and he was just talking about some things that had happened in his past. It's pretty straightforward, sort of stuff yes, we'll, yes, we'll, we'll yeah. do. And then he was talking about sort of where he lived and something that happened um, where he lived. And it just started, I started thinking of what happened in my own okay. life. Right. Yeah. And he just made a connection with this. And then I switched to, he triggered off some first, a first memory okay. of mine. Right. And, and then I thought, man, that's interesting. So, which I made a connection before, yeah. but it was, yeah. you know, I've never used it in clinical work before. And I thought, oh, how can I use that? Mm -hmm. And um, 
And I think of self, the use of self in mm. two different ways. You know, there's the direct expression of self, yes. where you say, okay, this is something that's happened mm. in yes. my life. Yeah. Or, yes. And then the other part, which is what I tend to use most of, probably most of us do, yeah. is what I call the indirect utilization of self. Yes. Yeah. And so this was it. So I then sort of just asked, I said, um, can we yeah, experiment? Mm -hmm. I, it wasn't the first session, no, no. and I knew them so quite well. I think there was trust between us. So, can we just sort of experiment? And I sort of got this question triggered off by you. Yes. And so, it's, yes, and um, she said yes. And so, I just asked him, you know, what was your first memory? Okay. okay. And um, and then he said he told me. I'm not going to the details, but mm -hmm. uh, he told me and. Um, in the end, uh, after he told me rather, I then asked, well, so, so what connections do you think right. it has with what's going on with you now? Yes, yes. And I started to pick up some themes as a okay. result of what he yes. was saying, and then I turned to her and I did the same okay. thing. And uh, when I then sort of said to him, well, you know, what was your experience of that? Yeah. He said, it's an amazing. Right. He said, he just hadn't sort of made connections. Mm -hmm. And they could see also how <coughs> this first memory, the themes okay. arising out of this first memory, uh, and for her as well, uh, linked to the present and their relationship and the logic of right. why they were not fitting it. Right, right. Okay. And um, so, in a, in a sense, uh, John, yes. you were asking some people not to name, yeah. and in the sense I was asking people to name. Okay, okay. okay. That was, yeah. right. And and how did you play with that difference well, in the way you presented your? I think the audience was because they did the interviews. Yes, yes, yes. They yes. did both of those. Okay. They had a different experience than we did, and I think they were ahead of us in terms okay. of making the connections yeah, because yes. they had both experiences, okay. whereas we didn't. So you had the audience think of their first memory. And did you well, have the first, no, first of all? The yes, 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 and yes. then the the okay, yes, 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 yes. And, so, yeah, sorry. and the uh, the comments were. I think that uh, predominantly, uh, a lot of people were very moved by right. Barry's uh, exercise, and that they right. moved to yeah. tears in some yeah. cases, and right. making connections that they didn't think they made. And in comparison with with mine, they, some people said um, that. It was um, that moment wasn't particularly important, right. you know. And the interview, the, the, no matter how hard the interviewer right. worked at making it right. more important, right. it wasn't. But for a lot of other people, they said, "I hadn't realised how significant that was to me and to other people, and how that's affected me, and how important that is." So I think both in both exercises, that something that seemed ordinary right. began to be made extraordinary, or its effects were extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. When we were debating. You're not saying, yes, or and saying, saying yes. um, that <coughs> that you could give a client choice. Yes, you yes. could say, you know, that you know the memory or the experience mm -hmm. of something. Mm -hmm. you, it's okay. You can choose to tell me or not tell me, and I will be able to talk with yes. you about it, yes. whichever choice you yes. make. Yes. So that it's preparing ourselves to be able to do it, because with the memory, mm -hmm. if somebody tells you, there's an effect on you, yes. which might affect your ability yeah, to. You know, so that. Uh, it, 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 those connections were made yeah. and it became a choice yeah. which therapists should prepare themselves for clients making either choice. I thought Thank you very much for contributing to this podcast. You're welcome. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks for asking us. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs>